So let's talk law of reverse effort. This is, I think, the most requested topic here at Deep Game, and probably because it's the trickiest principle to get right. The law of reverse effort, of course, states that the harder we try to play well, the more difficult the game becomes. And we've all experienced this, of course, in our daily life. This doesn't just apply to basketball, but it applies like this is a psychological phenomena that applies everywhere. And so some really common regular life examples we've all experienced, right? trying to fall asleep at night and the harder you try to fall asleep the more awake you feel of course it's only when we forget about trying to fall asleep we relax our mind that we naturally just drift off well that is classic law of reverse effort if you're trying to get somebody to like you maybe there's a girl or a guy that you're interested in and you're trying so hard to get them to like you that you actually end up coming across as needy and pushing them away well, of course, if you just relaxed and you didn't need so badly for them to like you, you were just yourself, they would like you a whole lot more. <laughs> this is, once again, classic law of reverse effort. And finally, another like obvious example is trying to be funny. The harder you try to be funny, the less people want to laugh at your jokes. And the more you're like trying to get a reaction from others, the less they want to give it to you. Once again, <laughs> classic law of reverse effort. And this goes of course, in the game of basketball. As we've all experienced, it's those games where you want most to play well. Maybe there's somebody coming to watch you play and you really want to impress them and you try, you try so hard to play perfectly that you end up playing sort of tight and hesitant and afraid to make any mistakes. And so you kind of fade into the background, afraid to assert yourself on the game. If you are trying to get your teammates to pass you the ball and you want more touches and so you're kind of ball chasing and calling out for the ball constantly, well, that's going to make your teammates resist giving it to you and not really want to give you touches because you're trying too hard. This is, <laughs> again, how the law of reverse effort plays out during games. I experienced this most for myself when I had a certain number of points I wanted to score in a game. I'd go in with this goal and I'd have it broken down by quarter. You know, let's say I needed or, or wanted rather 20 points that game, that's five points a quarter. And I'd see those minutes ticking by and I'd think to myself like, oh, I'm behind schedule. I need to like get my five points this quarter somehow. And I'd get more and more uptight and more and more frustrated and stuck in my head and try harder and harder psychologically, the more those minutes ticked by. And so it was the games that I needed to score a certain number of points that I ended up failing at that goal and usually, uh, you know, scoring below my average even. And so how do we get out of this trap? How do we stop trying so hard during games and for that matter in our daily life? Well, there's two points of confusion here that uh, a lot of players fall into and these are, these are sticking points that we need to get out of the way right up front. When I say trying, what I'm referring to is the psychological tension that we hold around needing things to go a certain way. That's what I mean by trying. It's not literally our physical exertion. Of course, there's physical energy that we apply to the game. That should go without saying. The goal here, and one of my teachers put this beautifully, he said, intention without tension, meaning we are physically giving effort, but we're relaxed in that effort. That's the goal. If you think of like sprinting or jumping, if you're really uptight and rigid as you're jumping, you're muscling your jump, you're not gonna jump all that high. It's an elastic, relaxed response that helps us like express explosive power the best. So this is what I mean here. It's once again, not a lack of physical effort, it's a lack of psychological tension that we're aiming for. In other words, we're aiming to be, to be in a relaxed, effortless state in the flow of the game. Yes, exerting physical energy, but not in an uptight way. This becomes even more <laughs> confusing. And the second point of confusion is that we can't try not to try. That's still trying. <laughs> this is like if I say to you, obvious example, you've all heard it before, I'm sure. Don't think of a pink elephant. What are you thinking of? Well, the pink elephant. And so in the same way, if I say, stop trying so hard, suddenly we try not to try. And that's just a double bind. We're trying double. So how do we do this? 
how can we get out of this trap of reverse effort and just naturally sink into, once again, that relaxed, effortless flow of the game? Well, step one, and the most obvious one, is not to try to do this through our thoughts and through our mind, but actually relax the physical body. Going back to that uh, quote from a teacher of mine, he said, intention without tension. We intend to exert ourselves on the game, but not with tension. Literally relaxing the physical body will relax the mind inherently. And I've spoken about this many times here. One of the core principles of the deep game is what we call the body-mind mirror. If you have tension in the mind, it will be reflected and mirrored in the body because the mind and the nervous system are essentially one thing. So tension in the mind equals tension in the body. Relax the body, and in the same way, you relax the mind. So it's reflecting. They're reflecting each other. First thing to do is relax the physical body and not going slack, of course. We don't like just go limp. <laughs> we're holding the body with good posture. We're full, but we're relaxed and open. You could think of this like uh, if you're dancing. Well, of course, if you're thinking through all of the moves of the dance and wanting to do it exactly perfectly, well, you're not going to come across all that fluid. It's only when you relax. It's not that your, your body's just gone limp, but you're relaxed and fluid. We want the body almost like water. So step one is to actually just simply relax the physical body. And I'll invite you right now, check in with your body and see where you're holding it. Are you relaxed? Maybe there's some unconscious tension that you didn't even notice were, was there. See if you can just relax that. As you relax the body, how does your mind begin to feel? Well, I'm willing to bet that a little bit of tension was just released from your mind simply by relaxing the body. So that's the first thing to do. Hold the body in a relaxed way. To drive this point home, I just want to remind you of that earlier point that we made <clears throat> about running and jumping in the same way that we don't muscle our jumps, it's just an elastic fluid movement, that's the way that we want to hold our body. Okay, I hope I've made that clear. Second step, <laughs> I call this reversing your effort. So in law of reverse effort style, the harder we try to play well, the more difficult the game becomes. Well, the way that we reverse that effort is actually to take a little bit of the effort off. And one uh, memory that comes to mind here, the most kind of shocking experience that I had of this early on in my career was in my freshman year. I was playing for the JV team. It's, I believe, our, our first, maybe second tournament that I'd ever played in, in my high school career. Up until this point, I've been largely obsessed with scoring. I thought scoring was like the measure of a player and I always had a goal for how many points I wanted to score. And so I was typically a shooting guard throughout my career, we go into the championship game of this very first high school tournament. And my coach approaches me and he says, I need you to be point guard this game. I'm like, what, what's going to happen to my scoring? <laughs> you want me to distribute the ball and be a playmaker? Like what? I've not, that's not me. I'm a scorer. He's like, no, I need you to, well, I didn't say this to him. Of course. I basically was like, yeah, of course I'll do it. <laughs> so he's like, oh, that, this is just what's going through my mind. So he says, I'm going to start you at point guard this game. What do you think happened? Well, <laughs> somehow, and again, this was so shocking for me in the moment and so interesting. I ended the game with 11 assists, which was by far a career high. I think at this point in my career, I was not a playmaker. And yet simply by like getting into the flow of distributing the basketball and I'd attack the lane and the defense would collapse and I'd dump it to the big man and I end up with 11 assists. Well, that was pretty cool, but even cooler than that is that I ended that game with 19 points. That was surprising, okay, because I wasn't trying as hard, nearly as hard to score. I set my mind to playmaking and distributing the ball, and in the process, by releasing the need to score a certain number of points, I found myself naturally in positions to score because I wasn't chasing points and chasing the ball. I just ended up within the flow of the game in positions to accumulate points. And so I end up with 19 points. That was like double my scoring average at that point, I believe. 19 and 11, maybe the best game I'd played up until that point in my career through not needing to score a certain number of points. <laughs> this is classic law of reverse effort. And so in the same way, if you actually set your mind not to 
like chasing after a certain goal, but take a little bit of effort off of that goal and say, hey, like whatever points I score is fine. Let me just go out and see what the game brings. Reversing your effort in a more like specific example, I think to that game, I'm not sure if you saw this or not, but there was a particular game where Russell Westbrook is playing for the Lakers. He's playing way too fast, trying a little bit too hard, making a lot of mistakes. And Shaq is on the sidelines and Shaq just simply says to Russ, he says, slow down, slow down, stop trying to play so fast and you'll actually find yourself more in the rhythm of the game. And so if you find yourself playing too fast, just slow down. <laughs> if you find yourself chasing points, focus on distributing the ball. What's the opposite of the direction that you're trying to harden? Go in that direction. There's in my, <laughs> one of my favorite examples of this comes from the UFC. There was a interim title fight between Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson. And again, I'm a big UFC fan, but I always say if you're not a UFC fan, the point is still the same. So Gaethje and Tony Ferguson, round one, Gaethje is just throwing these wild haymakers, swinging for the fences, trying to knock Tony out. In between rounds, his trainer, uh, Trevor Whitman, one of my like favorite guys in, in all of martial arts, genius. Trevor Whitman says something to Justin Gaethje, I'll never forget. He goes, Justin, take 10% off your punches. Slow down, relax, take 10% off. So rather than actually trying to knock this guy out, he wants him to actually swing lighter. That's interesting, right? Well, Justin Gaethje goes out and just starts piecing Tony Ferguson up, wins this fight in dominant fashion because he stopped trying so hard. He's like, okay, let me just land. Not trying to swing for the fences, knock him out, but let me just like touch him up. And in the process, he found himself in this striking rhythm that won him the fight. So take 10% off, allow some mistakes, allow errors. I find this in these talks when I'm speaking. Some days I sort of get into this mode of needing the talk to go in a certain way and I want it to go so perfectly and I want to say everything exactly right and like help the message land for you. But I'm trying too hard. And so I end up in front of the camera here and you know, doing take after take and like nothing is quite sounding right because naturally there's going to be little mistakes and missteps in the way that I say certain things and might, I might not get everything right. And in fact, I don't think I've ever given a perfect talk, <laughs> right? And so it's when I actually allow errors to occur and accept the mistakes that the talk comes across the most natural and I sink into the most effortless sort of rhythm with my speaking. So in the same way, when you're out there on the court, accepting errors and inviting mistakes to be made not on purpose of course we're not like turning the ball over on like um, you know we're not handing the ball to the other team not, nothing like that just accept that mistakes will be made take 10 percent off of your effort if you're chasing points focus on distributing the basketball in this way we can reverse our effort so that's step two Step one, relax the physical body. Step two, reverse your effort. Step three is simply to let it happen. And there's this beautiful quote from a musician named Charlie Parker. He said, first you learn your instrument, then you learn the music, then you forget it all and you just play. In other words, it takes time to sink into that state of effortlessness. And if we're chasing the state of effortlessness, that is still effort. That's still trying. We can't try not to try. And so it requires you to actually just give it some time to happen. Just like we're tossing and turning in bed, trying so hard to fall asleep that we keep ourselves awake. Well, when we let go of that, maybe we turn over and we just read a book or we just like kind of let our mind wander and stop trying so hard to sleep. Well, there's going to be some time that it takes to actually relax into drifting off. Same goes for the game of basketball. When you relax your body, you reverse your effort, give it some time. So in other words, just play. You learn the instrument, you learn the music, you know the skills, you know the game, just start playing. Forget about micromanaging your thoughts and your emotions and every single thing that happens on the court and trying it to arrange it all perfectly and play the perfect, just let it happen. And maybe you even find for the first few minutes, you're still trying too hard. That's okay, just let it happen. Let it happen on its own. In the same way that maybe you've been at a dance before and the first, few minutes, 10, 20 minutes, whatever, half an hour, you're kind of 
uptight. You're not really feeling like the rhythm of the music. You look around and uh, whoever else is in that room is like letting go and dancing and everybody's having a great time and you're, you're kind of stuck in your head. Well, if you force yourself to like mechanically do all these dance moves, but you're not really feeling it, it comes across as again, forced. Well, give yourself time to relax into the rhythm. Maybe you just like move your body just a little bit, a little bit, and then you move it a little bit more and you allow yourself to naturally sink into it. Once again, the same goes for basketball. Give yourself time to sink into it. So I, I hope that's clear here. Step number one, relax the physical body. Intention without tension. Step number two, reverse your effort. Take 10% off your punches, so to speak. Stop chasing points and distribute the ball. Step number three, give it time to sink into it. Allow it to happen. And one really cool exercise that I've given to so many players now, this is my prescription for those who find themselves trying too hard too often, freestyle dribbling. Put on some music, get a basketball, an open space, and just start dribbling to the rhythm of the music and enjoy this process, okay? This is really fun to do. This is what we did when we were like first learning the game. We were just totally relaxed and allowing ourselves to dribble the ball off our foot, whatever, try out new moves, experiment. Put on your favorite music for 10, 15 minutes or however long feels good to you and just get into the rhythm of dribbling the ball to that music. Well, what you'll find inevitably is that maybe if you're trying to get into the rhythm, you'll have a direct experience of, oh no, that's not it. I'm still trying too hard. But after you know a few minutes, five minutes, maybe you sink into it right away, you'll find, oh, I'm actually doing it. I'm in the rhythm of the music. I'm dribbling freestyle without really thinking of, about it. It's just happening. That's the state we're in at our best. This exercise will give you a sort of gateway into that experience. And once you're once you find yourself in that uh, mode of consciousness, so to speak, you're just relaxed, effortlessly dribbling the ball, not really thinking about the moves that you're making, they're just happening. Well, remember that and then reference it when you're in the game. That's the state that you want to be in. And I will suggest to you that the more that you actually do this exercise, super simple, right? It's a fun one. You could do this for 10 minutes a day even. If you do this frequently and consistently, accessing that state of effortlessness is going to become easier and easier. So add that to your training plan. Maybe you do this uh, you know, at the start of your workouts as a warm up. maybe you do it at the end. Doesn't really matter, just make sure that you do it. And if you have found yourself in that sort of tight, rigid, stuck to trying too hard mode and, and it's really a problem for you, you could try doing, I've prescribed a couple players this challenge, 30 day challenge where every day for at least 10 minutes you do freestyle dribbling. The other way you can do this, by the way, I'll mention here is freestyle dancing. It doesn't have to be with a basketball. You can actually dance. And for some players, this is even more effective because we're so self-conscious of our bodies that it's harder to sink into the rhythm. And so it requires letting go on a deeper level. It's easier to dribble a ball for a lot of us than it is to simply let our body move. And so so you might find that it's even more instructive if you just dance. Same principle goes, add that to your routine and I think it's going to help you a lot. And the last thing I'll say, and this is a deeper application of the law of reverse effort, more of a life application, I'll say that the best things in life happen naturally. In the same way that we naturally allow ourselves to drift off and fall asleep, we naturally sink into a rhythm in the flow of the game and play at our best, well, the best things in life happen of themselves, naturally, spontaneously, effortlessly. The best relationships that you have, whether it's a friendship or maybe a girlfriend, boyfriend, when you're with them, the conversation just flows, right? You don't have to try, you don't have to micromanage your words and like edit yourself as you're talking. It's just happening naturally, spontaneously. In the same way, so does your happiness. <laughs> this is a deep thought, right? But if you've ever been out looking at a beautiful sunset and you think to yourself, oh, I need to enjoy this. 
Well, that's the fastest way to suck all the enjoyment out of the experience, right? You're looking at this sunset, trying so hard to enjoy it that you start overthinking the process and you like let it kind of slip through your fingers. You miss this beautiful experience that you could have had if you would just let go. And happiness doesn't happen as an as a uh, well, I should say it in, in a clearer way. We can't try to become happy because trying to become happy implies that we're not happy. Okay? Happiness is a byproduct of relaxing into the flow of your life and doing what you love. Happiness comes spontaneously and naturally as a result. The best things in life happen naturally. So see if, well, another way I can put this is the more you want, the less you appreciate what you have. And so... <laughs> Rather than chasing after the states of mind that you want, like happiness or or whatever the case may be, see if you can apply the law of reverse effort to your life. Stop trying to chase the things that you want and see if they start coming to you. Okay, that's my challenge to you. I know that's a deeper thought and we could go way deeper into it. (laughs) This probably is like a multi-hour talk if we really wanted to flesh out this idea, but I'll leave you with that. The best things in life happen naturally. If you've ever had a beautiful night out with your friends or like this spontaneous, like awesome day just happened when all of you were together and it just like everything came together and you just had this awesome time, then (laughs) all of you, I I don't know if you've had this experience, but I, I certainly have. Uh, I remember there was this one night that we had at a, at a festival. I was with a group of friends and we just had this magical night sitting around this fire. And we all said like, oh, we need to come back to this fire on the final night and like make this happen again. Well, we come back on the final night and we (laughs) gather around the fire and there's a sandstorm. And so we get completely washed out. We can't, uh, we can't make it. Everybody goes back to their campsite and, it completely fell apart because we tried to capture magic that could only be uh, that could only happen spontaneously. Okay, so <laughs> the whole point I'm making here is that the best things in life happen naturally, and you find yourself in the natural flow of your life when you just let go of trying to make it be a certain way. Allow these things to happen. So. <laughs> Give yourself time, of course, to practice this. It's a deep practice. It's a principle that will, you know, it's one of those fundamental psychological phenomena that we'll be living with for the rest of our lives. And so we have all kinds of time to practice it. Use basketball as a training ground to practice it and then see if you can apply it to your life as well. And let go of trying so hard to do things well or to play well or to make your life be a certain way. And see if it can just naturally happen for you. Okay. Final question for you here. If you could share this uh, in the comments or reach out to us, I'd love to hear uh, when you experience this most often. So what situation do you find yourself in that uh, the law of reverse effort is most present for you? That will give me a good reference and see like if there's a specific situation during games or on the basketball court that you uh, face the law of reverse effort, then maybe we can drill deeper into that one. So let me know. I hope you enjoyed this one. Law of Reverse Effort is confusing to no end, but hopefully we cut through a little bit of that confusion for you, and I will see you next time. Take care. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass where you'll learn all of the basic fundamental principles that, in my opinion, every serious basketball player should know about the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives. And again, it's completely free of charge today. So head over to deepgame.com, join us, and I will see you there.